a very good evening to everyone welcome back to medical concepts this is shubham and today we are going to talk about the enterobacterial infections so let's start with the very first question here a patient died of <coughs> intoxication on the fourth day uh, after eating uncooked food okay so most of you are having the answer already in your minds because of the microbiology link so because in the microbiology you study about the salmonella or the salmonella losses uh, mainly it is the salmonella typhi okay gram negative bacteria releasing the endotoxins inside the body or inside the blood circulation so whenever a person uh, actually uh, eating the raw food or the uncooked food or the raw eggs or something like that the patient uh, is uh, very highly susceptible for having the salmonella depending on the immune system right so autopsy has shown that mucous membrane of the stomach and small intestine has has signs of inflammation and is covered with a mucus exudate now abscess has been detected in the lungs brain and liver so now abscess starts forming inside the lungs so it means like multiple organs are involved over here okay so let's make the patho link as well okay you know from the microbiology that yes eating the raw eggs eating the raw food or uncooked food can cause salmonella let's have the link for the pathology as well so what happens is that first of all let me uh, talk about the salmonella salmonella it is an intestinal infection basically and it is caused by the salmonella typhi which is a gram negative bacteria okay now it is anthropogenesis uh, or anthropozoonotic which means it uh, can occur in the humans also it can occur in the animals also okay that's why we are we are calling that as anthropozoonotic okay occurring in both humans as well as, as well as animals the most pathogenic form uh, that that can be you can you have already studied about that in the microbiology salmonella typhi can be there salmonella typhi medium salmonella enteritis uh, because that is causing uh, causing mainly the <coughs> enteric form of salmonella right then salmonella cholera suis okay so these are some kind of pathogenic forms of the salmonella incubation period is usually 12 to 36 hours as far as salmonella is concerned now uh, as i said that this is a gram negative bacteria releasing the endotoxin in the blood circulation so it can cause endotoxemia and that can lead to the endotoxic shock okay in the earlier videos if you have uh, watched them carefully i have told you that you know most of the gram negative bacteria are actually responsible for causing the septic shock <clears throat> isn't it which is an itself an emergency situation right so as compared to the gram positive bacteria gram negative bacteria are uh, you know much dangerous for our body because uh, they can uh, cause the severe situation emergency situation that is the septic shock okay so here in the salmonella <clears throat> what else do we see as far as pathmorpho is concerned or patho, patho link is concerned we'll be talking about the three forms over here or you can see three types what are these three types first one is the interstitial salmonella losses okay second one is the septic salmonella losses and third one is the typhoid salmonella losses okay all of these things as far as salmonella is concerned i have provided you in the description box below so you can give a read from there as well okay and make your own notes from there fine so i'm talking about the types of the salmonella Interst interstitial salmonella losses septic salmonella losses and the typhoid salmonella losses first one interstitial salmonella losses what happens is it is actually having the actually causing the gastroenteritis so what happens is uh, you know you must have heard about the food poisoning salmonella is causing the food poisoning isn't it most commonly however there are uh, many other organisms also but most commonly i'm talking about salmonella is causing the food poisoning this comes under the stage of this comes under the type of interstitial salmonella losses okay so uh, what happens says that there is a acute gastroenteritis gastroenteritis and uh, due to the food poisoning it is causing the severe dehydration of the body okay and sometimes we uh, <clears throat> we are not able to distinguish between the cholera and the salmonella sometimes and uh, so differential diagnosis sometimes uh, can become a little tricky for us to you know uh, properly diagnose the case that whether uh, the problem is due to cholera or due to salmonella okay so sometimes uh, we are calling that as home cholera okay so interstitial salmonella losses due to the difficult differential diagnosis between the salmonella and the cholera okay because both of the cases represent with the <coughs> severe dehydration okay however we may have the rice water stool in, uh, uh, in the other one that is a cholera but over here in the salmonella losses also there is a uh, severe dehydration of the organism due to the food poisoning now we are also calling that as home cholera second thing septic salmonella losses second type 
in the septic one as the name suggests septic which is like some kind of bacteria is involving some uh, sepsis okay bacteria is involving in other stages also but the sepsis thing is over here so septicemic disease uh, it is involving many other organs it is not on involving only the intestine but it is involving other kind of organs and you know metastatic multiple abscess can be present in the multiple organs for example it can involve the lungs it can involve the liver bones kidneys brain okay so these kind of things can be involved as far as septic salmonellosis is concerned so multiple abscess formation can be seen in the multiple organs that's what i want to say in the septic salmonellosis okay and the third one uh, and the last one is the typhoid salmonellosis uh, that is for the that actually resembles the typhoid fever okay so i told you first one that was interstitial salmonellosis that was resembling the cholera so we were calling that a home cholera third one i'm telling you that it is resembling the typhoid so i'm calling that as typhoid salmonellosis okay but in our question what they are saying multiple abscess abscess have been detected in the lungs brain and the liver so abscess involving three organs multiple organs are involving as far as abscess is concerned which stage i'm talking about i'm talking about the septic salmonellosis isn't it so answer here will be now much easier for you to recognize that will be the b option over here that is the salmonellosis septic form okay i want you to go through the to go through the explanation again while going back to the video and at the same time while listening to listening to the explanation read the notes in the description box below so that you are having a clear cut view about the salmonella types okay because types are important as far as this patho link is concerned over here okay this question is about the septic salmonellosis however they may ask you for the other two types also interstitial or the deferred salmonellosis okay fine let's move on to the next one question number 192 numerous oval ulcers located along the distal part of the small intestine were detected during the autopsy for men okay however before talking about this question let me talk uh, about the image which i have uh, actually inserted for you guys to understand about the salmonellosis much clearly uh, this is about the salmon uh, salmonellosis septic form okay which uh, we discussed about okay septic form salmon salmonellosis so here you can see most uh, most frequently because of the uh, weaker immune system uh, i would say uh, the neonates and infants are uh, probably uh, involved over here younger than 6 months of age okay now septic forms are frequently uh, accompanied by the local lesions okay so as i said multiple organs can be involved uh, there can be involvement of brain there can be involvement of the bones that is osteomyelitis that can, that can cause as i told you abscess formation will be seen in the multiple organs okay kidneys might be involved joints might be involved so multiple abscess will be seen in the multiple organs that is the main concept in the septic salmonellosis salmonellosis okay and if it is going towards a very severe form then you know if uh, you can understand uh, how uh, severe this situation might be because uh, already the situation is happening in the neonates or infants most commonly and uh, multiple organs are involving abscess are uh, already started in them so that can be the factor to the uh, life of the baby right or the neonates and infants isn't it okay so i was talking about the question number 192 now oval ulcers uh, were there located along the distal part of the small intestine detected during the autopsy of a man who died of diffuse peritonitis uh diffuse peritonitis uh, the bottom of the ulcer is clean that's uh, the keyword over here the bottom of the ulcer is clean flat formed of muscular serous membrane okay and the edges of the ulcers are even and round okay two ulcers have perforated holes 0.5 cm in diameter what disease can we suspect over here now uh, if i'm talking about this one uh, this is a comparatively much easier question i would say because they are not talking you about the types of the typhoid first of all let me tell you answer is the typhoid over here but if they will be asking you the stages of the typhoid in the options then it might become a little difficult or tricky for you i would say so here because of the ruling out of the choices you can easily rule out the other choices and you can uh, come to the conclusion that is typhoid fever so answer is typhoid over here but let's talk about the stages as well because if they will asking you the stages in the option then uh, they can confuse you really so let's talk about the typhoid fever and we'll talk about the stages as well so typhoid fever is uh, actually causing the enteric fever in the intestine okay so enteric fever is uh, there in the path, path physiology you must have studied about the uh, typhoid fever that uh, 
uh, you know it is causing the staplader pattern fever which means that uh, on the first day if there is, there was high fever on the second day there will be the no fever and the person uh, feels that the fever has gone okay but on the third day uh, the fever comes back okay so this cycle actually repeats so step letter fever step letter uh, pattern fever will be seen so this kind of pattern uh, might be seen on the graph okay that is called a step letter pattern fever okay step letter pattern fever step letter fever i'm writing over here okay so on one day it can high on the other day it can be low right fine so what about the typhoid okay so uh, it is causing enteric fever it is an uh, acute intestinal infectious disease actually it is causing by what is the etiological agent over here that is the salmonella typhi as you all know now source of infection uh, might be the sick person uh, or human uh, carrier means like uh, from the excretions the person might be if, uh, might have the infection right from the feces urine sweat like from the from the secretions or the excretion okay which are containing the microbes obviously so we are having the five stages of the typhoid fever okay or typhoid fever or enteric fever so what are these five stages uh, we are having the medullary swelling then necrosis then ulcer formation which is the unclear ulcers then fourth one is the clear ulcer or clean ulcer without necrotic tissues and the fifth one which is the healing or recovery okay so let's talk about them one by one okay all of the details uh, the detailed discussion of these types uh, i will provide them in the description box below so you can give a read from there as well now in the medullary swelling uh, what happens is i will just brief the summary over here okay very few point about the medullary swelling so the thing is uh, first of all uh, very particular finding in the medullary swelling you will see in the enteric fever that is or the typhoid fever that is the macrophageal macro phagal granulomas over there so we are also calling that as typhoid granuloma as we see them in typhoid fever so we are calling them as typhoid granuloma they these granulomas are made up of the macrophages okay so macrophagal granuloma in the typhoid fever they, we are calling them as typhoid granuloma which stage i'm talking about i'm talking about the first stage of the typhoid fever that is the medullar swelling okay so here you will be seeing the granulomatous inflammation in the lymphoid apparatus of the intestine and most commonly if i'm talking about the intestine which particular thing i'm talking about i'm talking about the peers patches in the in terminal ileum region yes i'm talking about the peers patches in the terminal ileum region which is involved over here and having the formation of the macrophage granuloma which we are calling that as typhoid granuloma because i'm talking about the typhoid or enteric fever over here that was about the first stage second one necrosis so after a few days or or one week i would say after 7 to 10 days what happens is the intestine is complicated by the necrosis and the ulcer formation now okay so th that granuloma formation will lead to uh, in a week or about so like in a week or 7 to 10 days i would say second stage comes over there necrotic stage there is necrosis so this granuloma formation converts itself into the necrotic stage so that peers patches which i'm talking about in the terminal ileum region uh, in that uh, particular part there will be the starting of the necrotic process so necrosis and ulceration will start to begin over there in the second stage that is the necrosis okay that is easy to understand because the stage of the name is the stage Uh, is called as necrosis so necrotic uh, process will start over there third stage comes that is a ulcer formation and i am calling that as unclear ulcer guys unclear ulcers they, that is the third stage now what happens is in the second week necrosis i told you 7 to 10 days second one second stage in the third stage what happens is in the second week what happens the mucosa over the swollen lymphoid tissue okay remember the peers patches okay in that area over the swollen lymphoid tissue the mucosa over it is having the oval ulcers formation okay with the long axis they will start to form the oval ulcers okay and sometimes in the colon also the ulcers are small and the punctate okay this they will be smaller and the lymphoid follicles uh, will be there having the ulcer formation over there along with that uh, they will be having the irregular shape that's why we are calling this stage ulcer formation unclear ulcers because they are having the irregular shape that's why we are calling that as unclear ulcers formation okay now next stage comes in the next stage we are having the clean ulcer formation so in the third one there was a unclear ulcer undefined edges irregular shape irregular formation in the fourth one clear ulcer now there is no necrosis because our uh, tissue is actually going towards the healing process okay so now clean ulcer 
uh, is having a regular shape and that's how you recognize then it is not having the necrotic tissue okay in this stage the perforation can develop however okay if they will be asking you in which stage of tip fever the perforation might uh, develop then your answer will be the clean ulcer stage and the last stage comes now that is the healing or the recovery okay now the granuloma will be coming scler sclerotic and necrosis might go towards goes towards a petrification okay process so that was about the five stages of the uh, typhoid fever or the artery fever okay i recommend you to go through the go through the explanation part again and uh, at the same time go through the description box as well so that you are having a clear cut uh, view about the types of the typhoid fever or the artery fever in your mind okay because at the same time this is the very important topic shalmonella shigella typhoid they ask you more often nowadays right fine so here is the image which you can correlate over here so i am talking about the particular stage over here that is the ulcer formation however in this question if you will ask me which type i am talking about if i am talking about the five types of the typhoid ulcer uh, however this question became easy uh, for you guys to rule out other choices if you know that ulcer formation is a part of the typhoid fever the thing is which ulcer, which stage if they uh, if they will ask you then what will be your answer over here as I, as i said the bottom of the ulcer is clean so your answer will be the clean ulcer stage isn't it so answer is very very clear cut in your mind so it will be the clean ulcer stage okay so that will be the stage of the typhoid fever here i am uh, talking about the thing let's say this is a ileum uh, terminal ileum okay and i'm talking about the pear patches over here okay now here which you can appreciate this one i want to tell you this one okay this is the ulcer formation which is happening this is the ulcer formation and if they are having the irregular shape we are calling that as uh, you know unclear ulcer if they are having smooth edges regular edges then we are calling that as clear ulcers okay so here uh, my motto was to show you guys uh, so that you are having a clear perspective in your mind about the ulcers in the small intestine terminal ileum i'm talking about mainly the pears patches okay remember about the location as well so these are the longitudinal ulcers over the pears patches as i told you right so this in the third stage and in the fourth stage we are talking about the ulcer formation the third stage i told you about the unclear ulcers and the fourth stage i'm talking about the clear ulcers okay so that is about the clean ulcer stage of the typhoid fever let's move on to the next question now question number 193 few ulcers 4 to 5 cm in size would threaten the terminal part of the small intestine this is also the same question i guess and they are talking about terminal part of the small intestine that means they are talking about the pears patchy region okay during the topsy of the 56 year old man the edges of the ulcers rise above the surface of the mucous membrane okay walls of the ulcers are covered with covered with a friable grayish yellow masses Vidal's, Vidal's reaction is positive. Now, Vidal's reaction is a test for the, yes, Vidal's reaction is a test for the typhoid fever. Okay, you know that very well from the microbiology link. Now, the diagnosis of disease, very clear cut. Again, this is the easier one because if you don't know the pathology behind the typhoid, even then you can crack the question because of your microbiology knowledge because they, in the last, they said that Vidal reaction, Vidal's reaction is positive that is seen in the typhoid fever. Okay so that is done so comparatively easy question but the thing is uh now you know the terminal part of the ileum pears patches involved in the typhoid fever which stage third or fourth stage clean ulcer and clear ulcer but here the thing is if you want to crack this question with the perspective of the pathology side then i would say that edges of the ulcers they said they rise above the surface of the mucous membrane isn't it edges of the ulcers they rise above the surface of the mucous membrane now this is not the clearest ulcer they are actually the unclear ulcers so this is the third stage over here so here if you will ask me the stage of this typhoid fever then i would say that this is a unclear ulcers and that is the third stage of the typhoid fever okay before that i told you clean ulcer that was the fourth stage of the that was the fourth stage of the typhoid fever okay moving on to the next question now question number 194 death of a 16 year old patient was caused by diffuse fibrinous purulent peritonitis adoption adoption shown also in the lower part of the small intestine again guys lower part of the small intestine means you know that what are the three parts of the small intestine duodenum is the initial part of the small intestine then jejunum comes and then last part is the ileum okay here i would like to uh, link the pathophysiology over here a very important question comes from the anemia side so sometimes they ask you the site of absorption in the duodenum region we are having the absorption of the do uh, iron in the jejunum region, we are having the absorption that is the absorption site for the folic acid or vitamin B9. In the terminal ileum region, uh, we are having the absorption site for the vitamin B12 or also called as cobalamin. 
okay please keep that in your mind because sometimes they ask you this thing from the pathophysiology side one more thing i would like to tell you about the inflammatory bowel disease you are having two kind of types right crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis ulcerative colitis uh, is actually happening in the sigmoid colon and the rectum most commonly but in the terminal ileum i, I want to tell you most specifically uh, the most common location of the crohn's disease is starting from the terminal ileum the most common site for the crohn's disease is the terminal ileum however it may affect any part of the git from the oral cavity till the rectum it can involve any kind of thing even till the anus it can involve anything but most common location of the crohn's disease is terminal ileum okay fine listen to this part again so that you are having a clear cut perspective about that 194 i am talking about fibrinous protein peritonitis also in the lower part of the small intestine which repeats the form of pears patches pears plaque with intestinal wall perforation okay now microscopically the picture of the lymphoid tissue is erased super supers by the proliferative monocytes that form granulomas complication of what disease is meant okay now what is the answer answer is very very uh, clear you don't need to even look at other options over here answer is very very clear that is a typhoid fever okay now the question arises in your mind is which which stage are they talking about okay uh, in the last they talked about the proliferative monocytes that form the granulomas anywhere they are not talking about the ulcers okay ulcer formation they are not talking about yet they talked about the proliferative monocytes that form granulomas if you remember while i was discussing about the stages of the typhoid fever i told you in the very first stage of the medullary swelling i told you about the typhoid granuloma remember that i was calling that as mono sorry macrophagal macrophagal granulomas they are saying that proliferative monocytes right proliferative monocytes that form what that form the granulomas monocytes if they are present in the blood circulation we are calling them as them as monocytes if they comes into the tissues if they will come into the pears patches they will be called as macrophage so can i say them can i say them as macrophagal granulomas can i say them as typhoid granuloma that is the case so typhoid granuloma which stage i am talking about i am talking about yes medullary swelling i am talking about medullary swelling over here okay so that is the answer of the stage as far as stage is concerned if they are asking the stage then this will be the answer because they because of the granuloma formation okay moving on to the next question over here autopsy of a dead man who was ill with the typhoid fever has shown the following change in the small intestine enlarged group lymphoid follicles again they are talking about the lymphoid follicles they are talking about the small intestine they are talking about the typhoid fever they might be asking you the stage because already they told you about the typhoid rise above the surface of the mucous membrane of gray red color succulent they their surface looks like convolutions and grooves microscopic examination at the formation of again they are talking about the typhoid granuloma very clear cut answer in your mind no need to think much about that that is the medullary swelling isn't it so answer will be the medullary swelling okay moving on to the next question question number 196 a patient died on the third day after the operative perforation of the large intestine operative perforation of the large intestine wall with the signs of diffuse purulent peritonitis now autopsy has shown the thickened mucous membrane of the large intestine covered with fibrinous membrane single ulcers penetrate to different depth fine histological examination tells necrosis of mucosa fibrin leukocytic infiltration with the hemorrhagic focuses complication of what disease caused the death of the patient okay fine so here they are talking about basically the shigellosis shigella now let's find out why okay so the thing is what happens in shigella first of all uh, uh, let's talk about that uh, they are causing the dysentery okay we are uh, uh, saying that shigella is causing the bacillary dysentery okay now morphologically uh, it is causing the colitis actually and it is having four stages let me talk about those four stages or types okay so we are having the catarrhal colitis fibrinous colitis third one is the ulcer formation ulcerative colitis and fourth one is the healing of the bone okay let's start with the first one catarrhal colitis catarrhal colitis means that uh, here the mucosa becomes the edematous and the hyperemic and it is covering itself by the pus and the mucus okay that is a catarrhal one so edema edematous and the hyperemic mucosa will be appreciated over here in the catarrhal colitis second one comes the fibrinous colitis 
Now in the fibrinous colitis, within the course of the 24 hours, within the duration of the 24 hours, what happens is that fibrinosuppurative exudate forms firstly. Okay, within first day, within the first 24 hours, what happens is, is the formation of fibrinosuppurative exudate. It firstly appears or forms. Then diffusely, it covers the mucosa and produces a particular kind of pseudomembrane. Okay, listen to the words very carefully. I'm talking about pseudomembrane particular kind of pseudo membrane that actually imparts a color as dirty gray to yellow okay dirty gray to yellow pseudo membrane appears what stage fibrinous colitis and it is having the it is consisting itself of the necrotic mucosa it is having the neutrophils fibrins rbcs okay so these kind of things are involving over there okay now whenever this pseudo membrane is degenerating or the slogged off then along with that bloody mucus is coming out okay bloody mucus comprising what dysentric stool of shiglosis so in short what i want to tell you in the fibrinous colitis there is a formation of fibrinous operative exudative it covers the diffusely it covers the mucosa produces a pseudo membrane over there which imparts a color as dirty gray to yellow color and whenever you are you want to slog off this membrane the pseudo membrane there will be the bleeding blood tinged blood tinged mucus will be coming out over here okay that was about the fibrinous colitis third one is the ulcer formation which is the ulcerative colitis and fourth one is the healing of the wound okay so here the healing HD starts to appear over there okay so epithelial regeneration will start and that healing process will approximately uh, complete in about two weeks so here they were talking about the purulent peritonitis large intestine covered with a fibrinous membrane single ulcers penetrate to different depth the thing they said that in the histological examination or the microscopic examination they said the necrosis of the mucosa fibrin okay fibrin and leukocytic infiltration with the hemorrhagic focuses as i said that there is a formation of pseudo membrane and this pseudo membrane is consisting of what necrotic mucosa neutrophils fibrin and the erythrocytes it is having RBCs, that's why whenever you are trying to slog off that pseudo membrane, blood tinged mucus comes out. That's why they are saying hemorrhagic focuses, isn't it? So it is seen in the which stage of Shigella? I'm talking about the fibrinous colitis. So if somebody will ask you which stage of Shigella, Shigella they are talking about, then they are talking about the fibrinous colitis. All the stages I have mentioned in the description box also. You can read from there as well. Okay. Okay, let's move on to the next question over here. Question number 197. Multiple red colors of the irregular form were detected in the sigmoid colon over here. So multiple red ulcers of the irregular form in the sigmoid colon region and the rectum during the autopsy. The mucous membrane between them was covered with a dirty gray membrane. I told you dirty gray membrane, pseudo membrane. Dirty gray membrane is the pseudo membrane. Will be appreciating where? Yes, you are right you're talking about the uh, right now shigella or shigellosis but which stage i want to know yes that is the fibrinous colitis stage so here uh, your answer will be the shigella obviously or shigellosis but the stage again that will be yes that will be the fibrinous colitis fibrinous colitis so i want you to remember the stage as well so that if they want you to in case if they want you to confuse uh, in between the options uh, while uh, talking about the stages you actually have some idea you actually should have some idea about the stages as well okay because sometimes they uh, can confuse you with the options giving about the stages particular particularly let's talk about the question number 198 a 50 year old man who seriously fell ill was diagnosed shigellosis uh, now they themselves uh, told you that uh, the person is having the shigellosis shigella diagnosis died on the seventh day of the disease Okay, the person is dead. Unfortunately, autopsy has shown a thickened wall of the thick, thick wall of the sigmoid colon and the rectum initial parts. Remember, uh, if we are talk they are talking about shigella, most common location that will be the yes, that will be uh, last part of the colon. I would say uh, that is the sigmoid colon or the rectum. Okay, uh, if you remember third stage, I told you the ulcer formation over here. That is the ulcerative colitis, and I told you in the discussion that the ulcerative colitis. Uh, the most common site of ulcerative colitis is sigmoid colon and the rectum, right? So that is the case over here. So whenever they are talking about shigella, they will be talking about which stage or which location, shig uh, sigmoid colon and the rectum. So 
by using that knowledge also you can actually crack the question that whether they are talking about shigella or salmonella or the typhoid okay because in the typhoid i told you what in the typhoid i told you about the pears patches in the terminal ileum okay and there the crohn's disease may develop in the terminal ileum isn't it okay coming back to the question they are saying fibrous membrane on the mucosa surface histologically deep necrosis of the mucous membrane fibrin infiltration of the necrotic masses what are actually what kind of colitis is meant here also they want to talk about the fibrinous colitis stage but over here uh, the thing is they didn't mention about the fibrinous so i would go with the diphtheric colitis diphtheric colitis is also called as pseudo membranous colitis and i told you fibrinous colitis will be having the pseudo membrane formation that is imparting the color as dirty gray yellow isn't it so this is the fibrinous colitis or the diphtheric colitis or the pseudo membranous colitis okay here i have inserted the image for you guys so uh, you can see the pseudo membrane uh colite is over here okay so these are the pseudo uh, memory okay so in the lines there the uh, you know uh, the patches which you can appreciate over here okay they are arranging themselves in the lines most probably okay let me remove the marking so that you can easily appreciate what is happening over here so yes that is the thing fine so that is the pseudo membranous colitis okay however most common cause of the pseudo membranous colitis is the Clostridium difficile. Do not forget that it's a microbiology link. Okay, so guys, that was about the discussion of the Salmonella, Shigella, and the uh, typhoid fever or the enteric fever. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the discussion. If you did, please hit the like button. If you watched the video till here, please hit the like button. It gives me really motivation to make more and more video for you guys. Uh, at the same time, if you are having any kind of doubt, you can connect to me via Facebook or Instagram uh, from the given links below in the description box. and if you are enjoying the videos please give your reviews uh, in the comment section below so i wish you all the best for the exam uh, please keep preparing keep studying i will see you in my next video till then take care and the next time bye bye